The first thing I'd do is make sure that getting a PhD in my desired field actually got me closer to the life that I wanted and the career that I wanted. The thing is, is that when we first start doing a PhD, we do it because maybe there's no other option. We feel trapped, we don't wanna get a job. And let me tell you this, getting a PhD is not a ticket to anything, but it can limit your kind of career to something you actually don't want to do. So before starting a PhD, I would recommend doing a few things. The first thing is getting on your countries or the country you want to live in, get into their like popular job search area website thing and just start typing in PhD and in my case it would be PhD chemistry to see what sort of jobs are actually available in that country that you want to live in. Now I didn't do that until I actually had a PhD and then I was like oh I don't actually want anything to do with these things. Like I was choosing the best of a worst bunch of options. So let me have a look. So seek is a very kind of popular um, place to find real person jobs in Australia. And uh, this is the sort of thing you get if you end up going to PhD chemistry in Australia. So senior analytical project chemist, yeah, postdoc fellow, all right. Trainee pattern attorney, bleh. I actually, at one point was like, I think maybe I want to do a patent attorney sort of qualification. And I ended up sort of like trying to network. And then in the end, I realized that their job was rubbish, even though it paid really, really well. And uh, it was never gonna be for me, but I at least thought about it when I was desperate. Um, another thing, you know, another tr trainee patent attorney, um, synthetic medical chemist, and then like, you know, you see there's lots of university jobs, but there's not many kind of industry jobs, at least not yet. And okay, yeah, okay. Well, now we start to get to the industry jobs. Do I want to work in oil and lubricants? Do I want to work as an analytical chemist or in, you know, projects for a company? So none of these actually interest me. And I think that's one thing that I should have really sort of considered before doing any PhD in this area. If any of these actually sort of like jump out to you, then good luck to you. That's a good sign that getting this qualification will get you closer to a job that you actually want. And importantly, you have to make sure that you can't get that job without a PhD, because otherwise you could just go and apply for that job with your undergraduate degree or your master's and, uh, you know, skip the PhD thing altogether. So check it out, seek or whatever job thing your country uses. Another thing I would have done, and this is if you want to stay in academia or you're not sure and you want to test the waters, is before doing a PhD, I would actually look at the government research priorities for the country that you want to do your PhD in or you want to settle in afterwards. Now, the thing is that these government research priorities change with different uh, politicians are in power, different parties that are in power. But overall, I think these are a good indicator of where the money will be spent, where the priority lies for different research areas because you do not want to go into a research area that is going to struggle for money because you'll get kicked out the other side of your PhD. Also, struggling to attract attention to your uh, research and if you can't use those special government like phrases and buzzwords in your applications, they are less likely to get funded. That's just the reality of it. So if we head over here to the um, Australian Research priorities by the Australian Government Research Council. Um, here we are. So you need a job, uh, you need research that fits into food, soil and water, transport, cybersecurity, energy, resources, advanced manufacturing, environmental change or health. Now all of those are fantastic. If you can then find a PhD that's related to research that's already been sort of a, uh, funded through this uh, grant application scheme. And that is a great sign that once you get out the other end, there may be some money, maybe some more scunge money to keep you on doing research past your PhD. Um, and uh, yeah, that is where I would also start looking, either seek or something like the government research priorities for your country will give you an idea of whether or not doing a PhD is valued, your PhD will be valued afterwards, and that there'll be lots of money and or jobs that you wanna go into afterwards. I wish I had done that. 
This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. Link is in the description as well. When you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract and more. It's exclusive content only available on that newsletter. So go sign up now. It's free. This is something that uh, I think a lot of PhD graduates do not admit. And that is that they wish they had gone to a better school, a better university, a better research institute, whatever it is, getting a PhD from a well-known, recognized uh, PhD. Now, this can change from field to field. You know, like everyone knows Stanford, Cambridge, Yale, Oxford, all of those places are known, you know, around the world. But in some fields, some universities and research institutes are better known than others. And I would have made sure that at least the one I was going to was well respected in my field, if not respected by the world. There's a couple of things for this. First of all, when you get a PhD from a well-recognized university, it is a bit more of a ticket to better jobs, better opportunities. And also, there is a tiered system in university rankings. And where you get your PhD from, you are now open to getting a job in all of the other institutions below. But very rarely have I seen someone from a lower university, you know, get an academic position at a higher ranked university. So choosing the, the best university you can go to in the country that you want to live in, I think is so important. I chose the University of Newcastle in Australia. I loved it there, don't get me wrong. I think it's a great institution, but I probably should have gone somewhere a bit better, a bit more recognized, especially in the solar field. Melbourne, Brisbane, um, they had universities that were much more well respected in that field. People should still look at getting into the best university they can because ultimately it is still an archaic system run by crusty old dinosaurs who still really put a lot of value on prestige and where you went to the university, where you got your PhD. The, the people you uh, did your uh, PhD under, that is all very, very important. Another thing I wouldn't do during my PhD is spend so much time fighting the system. The system is there not to be fought. Um, when you're doing a PhD, you know, a lot of people think they're entering kind of this uh, completely free academics sort of like uh, mind space where they can just explore whatever. And I, I think the reality of academia at the moment is if you want to be successful, you do have to sort of like be institutionalized and follow, you know, a particular line of thought. You have to sort of like, you know, really support the field. You, you can't go too mental, too crazy. You'll be an outcast. And I also spent a lot of time fighting my supervisors unnecessarily. If you uh, now work with my supervisors, uh, apologize on my behalf because I did fight them far too much. I, I didn't really understand why they were sort of like so combative. So, you know, and I, I always sort of like felt like I stood up for myself when in reality, I was really just sort of like shooting myself in the foot. Um, I think I would have spent more time um, sort of like uh, listening, learning, understanding their point of view rather than taking offense to everything they said or trying to sort of like change uh, their approach to their own research. And, you know, I, I was I may be a little bit more combative than I should have been. So I wouldn't have fought the system, the academic system. I wouldn't have fought the uh, my PhD supervisors as much, you know, because ultimately they're in a very tough position trying to find funding for research and and uh, yeah, I, I was probably a little bit too oppositionally defiant, I think is probably the term. And uh, it probably would have made a much nicer time for everyone involved. Now, not everyone in PhD in academia actually ends up getting a job in academia. In fact, that is so very rare. So one thing I would have done is I would have looked for industrially supported PhD scholarships. Not only would that have given me sort of like a foot in the door when I was looking for a job, but also it would have given me the first opportunities to see if working in industry is something that I would have wanted to do. Now I'm speaking on behalf of like a, someone who's got a PhD in chemistry, but I know that there's some other, you know, um, fields where you can find industrially supported 
placements where you do a little bit in the industry, a little bit in the acad in, in the university and academia, and you kind of sort of like, you know, span those two worlds. And I think that would have given me a much better idea of whether or not I wanted to do this anyway, in general, but also it would have provided a little bit more money. The people that did industrially supported PhDs when I was doing my PhD had top up scholarships and they were earning a good wage, like a normal sort of person's working wage just out of uni. I think they ended up earning about 60,000 Australian dollars per year, whereas I was on about 20. So it was significantly more. And uh, seeing them buy all these fancy bikes and cars and having a lovely life was, you know, a little, I was a little bit jealous. There's no doubt about it. But ultimately what they got at the end was um, a job, like not a guaranteed job, but at least connections in an industry that maybe they were valued in because you know that that industry was, you know, supporting PhD students. So the value kind of goes both ways. And that's one thing I wish I had done a bit more is try to find a PhD that uh, had connections with industry, strong connections that I could build kind of uh, rapport and then get a job at the end. Easy, easy. So there we have it. There's everything you need to know about what I would do differently if I had to do a PhD over again. Did I make mistakes? Yes. But did I enjoy it? And did I think it's worth it? Yes both of those things. Let me know in the comments what you would add. What would you do differently if you had your time over again? That will help so many people when they stumble across this video. All right then, also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide, and I'll see you in the next video.